Hey guys, for today I have another painting presentation and this time I would like to talk about this work, uh, the Mona Lisa. You obviously know it already. Actually this is uh, one of the most, if not uh, the most famous painting in the world and people uh, generally know that it was painted by Da Vinci. This uh, work has fascinated the audience, especially in the 20th century, when it reached this uh, iconic uh, status. And uh, for that reason, it has been reproduced countless times in uh, art books, in commercials, and there has been uh, various interpretations of the, of the work. It also uh, appears in uh, novels, for example, uh, in the past few years, in the Da Vinci Code. But what I would like to do with you today is uh, leave aside these uh, interpretations that I sometimes find a bit um, artificial and look uh, at the work for what it is, how it is uh, built, how it is painted and also tell you a little bit about the history of this painting and um, Da Vinci uh, himself. So uh, first, where does this uh, painting come from? It was made a bit more than five centuries ago by uh, Da Vinci who painted it in Italy probably between uh, 1503 and 1506 in Florence and it uh, came with him when uh, in the last years of his life he was invited to France by the King Francis I and he moved to, uh, to France with uh, some of his works including the Mona Lisa, on which he continued to work probably in the years 1516 and 1517. Da Vinci was not only uh, a painter, as you probably know, he was also a scientist. He uh, invented various uh, machines, conducted uh, scientific research, and uh, for the quantity of different things he made, for his uh, creativity and originality, he is uh, broadly uh, recognized as a genius of his time. When it comes to painting, he produced very few works, at least that have uh, come to us, first because he was also doing other things but also because he painted extremely slowly typically he would spend uh, several years uh, on the same painting and he uh, never really finished them he wanted to continue to work uh, on his uh, paintings so that even when he died he considered that uh, none of his work was actually uh, finished. The uh, Mona Lisa probably was the portrait of uh, the wife of a wealthy Florentine man, Del Giocondo, and for that reason uh, this painting is known as uh, La Gioconda in uh, Italy or La Gioconde in, uh, in French. And uh, the painting has spent most of its uh, history in France because it was bought after the death of Da Vinci by uh, the French king, Francis I, and it remained in uh, royal collections until the uh, French Revolution when it was moved to the Louvre Museum, where it still is uh, today and it has uh, been there 
for the past uh, two centuries, with the exception of a few years. The painting was stolen in 1911 by an Italian man who uh, took it back to uh, Italy until it was uh, finally found and brought back to the Louvre two years later. And it also uh, traveled in the 1950s and 1960s, once to the US and once to uh, Japan. When we uh, look at this uh, portrait, the first fascinating thing is that we cannot help focusing immediately on the face of the Mona Lisa. And uh, after having uh, looked at the face, we would typically have a look at the hands, then the shape of the whole uh, body, and at this moment we realize how the composition is made. A woman sitting on an armchair and uh, looking at us with her uh, arm rested um, on the uh, arm of the chair with a uh, landscape almost like uh, an aerial view uh, behind her. The composition is extremely simple. The shape of the body is uh, built like a pyramid standing in front of this uh, very deep landscape behind. But what uh, attracts us and uh, has been fascinating artists um, and the audience in general is obviously her face. Her face is uh, particularly strange when we think about it. She has no uh, eyelids, no eyebrows. You couldn't say whether she is uh, ugly or beautiful. And uh, if we take a closer look at it, we realize that her face is uh, essentially built with shadows that are uh, making the mouth, the nose and the eyes uh, come out the skin of the face. If you uh, take a look at the mouth, for example, you see that there is a continuity in the carnation between uh, the skin of the face and uh, the lips. Same thing with the nose. On the right part of the nose, which uh, we see uh, on our left, there is no uh, distinction between the, the cheek and the nose. And if you have a look at the eyes too, you see that they are essentially suggested by this uh, game of light and shadow. And the whole face is uh, highlighted by the hair and this veil she has uh, around uh, her body. The technique used to paint uh, this uh, face I already talked about in uh, the video about the Sixteen Madonna by uh, Raphael. It is a technique that appeared uh, during the Renaissance in uh, Italy and was uh, essentially developed by Da Vinci called the Sfumato. The Sfumato is a technique based on an accumulation of very thin layers of painting with uh, a very low concentration of pigment so that the layers are almost translucent and uh, dozens of successive uh, layers give this uh, impression that the colors, the shapes are 
melting and uh, smoothes the transitions in various parts of the, the painting. And this use of uh, very smooth transitions when it comes to the carnation or the landscape behind with uh, stronger contrasts, the darkest parts of the, the clothes and uh, the hair give a very uh, obvious structure to the whole uh, portrait. The other fascinating thing with this uh, face is the uh, enigmatic expression it has. It seems that she is uh, smiling, but this is uh, uncertain. We could not even say what she is looking at. Is it us or something uh, behind us? So that this uh, expression that is apparently uh, impossible to define has uh, fascinated uh, for uh, a very long time. And maybe um, another uh, aspect of the, the fascination that people uh, feel in front of the painting is the deep uh, harmony that seems to uh, be expressed by it. Actually, the landscape uh, behind and the very symmetrical and well-organized uh, structure of the painting are uh, almost uh, metaphoric. The scene that is uh, depicted here is more uh, an ideal than uh, reality. This kind of landscape uh, did not exist in the region of Florence, at least with that kind of uh, aerial uh, view. And uh, there is something slightly uh, abstract to this undefined uh, face coming with the very realistic and meticulous uh, painting of the whole uh, body, the clothes, uh, the hands that are particularly well made, so that this uh, work creates a powerful feeling of uh, ideal, of harmony, um, that combined with the enigmatic expression of the face is uh, particularly uh, inspiring and raises questions that can cannot be answered, um, obviously, but uh, attract our attention. Maybe that some of the apparently uh, abstract aspects of the of the work are accidental. For example, the absence of eyebrows and eyelids uh, may uh, be explained by their disappearance over time. When the painting was examined in the past few years with modern ways of investigation, it was uh, uh, shown that the uh, eyebrows had disappeared uh, over time, maybe due to uh, overcleaning of the painting, but this has maybe added to the uh, enigmatic and strange uh, dimension of this work. Interestingly too, uh, the fame of the Mona Lisa, uh, her uh, iconic uh, status, are things that are relatively uh, recent. The painting was appreciated as one of uh, Da Vinci's uh, best works. There are not uh, that many, anyway, until uh, the 19th century, but it was not praised as uh, an exceptional uh, creation. In the 19th uh, century, various uh, poets and writers uh, started to uh, be attracted to the work 
however, in the 19th uh, century, the star painters of the Italian Renaissance were more uh, people like uh, Raphael or uh, Michelangelo, so that uh, when an estimate of the price of the Mona Lisa was made in the 19th century, it came out five to six times cheaper than portraits of the same size by uh, Raphael. And what would uh, make Mona Lisa uh, acquire this uh, unique status as a work of art would be the theft uh, of the painting in the, the 1910s, which added uh, fame to the work and uh, the uh, increasing focus of the uh, audience on the uh, enigmatic uh, expression of this uh, work, its uh, harmony and uh, the uh, abstraction, the uh, ideal um, vision that this uh, painting is uh, showing us. Strangely, too, there is uh, something universal in the uh, appeal of the Mona Lisa. This painting is no less famous in uh, Asian countries, especially in Japan or in China, than in uh, Europe or the Americas. Even uh, people coming from very different uh, cultures have found uh, the same fascination for this uh, face and this uh, construction of a portrait that is apparently uh, incredibly simple. If you uh, have a chance to visit the Louvre Museum, Mona Lisa is uh, an obvious uh, work to uh, see, but honestly, uh, the conditions in which you, you can see the painting are not ideal, because due to its uh, popularity, it is constantly surrounded by uh, many people. The painting is protected by a bulletproof uh, glass panel, and uh, even though the work itself is uh, still in a very good state, given its uh, age. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we are talking about a painting that has more than 500 years, and that was uh, painted on a wood panel, so that uh, due to uh, humidity and uh, the changes in uh, temperature, the wood has been uh, changing shape and uh, making cracks uh, appear on the painting, but however, uh, despite its good state of preservation, uh, it is difficult to really enjoy the, the painting when you see it uh, for real. So my uh, advice, if you visit the Louvre one day, is to have a quick uh, glance at it, so that you can check uh, that you have seen it, but then spend more time on uh, other works. Okay, as usual, I hope you found it uh, interesting. Your uh, feedbacks and comments are welcome in the comments below, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.